Welcome everybody to this edition of Cooking with Koi, where today we are making some chicken soup. So, we have a big pot in which to boil, or in which to hold our soup. We have a frying pan with a lid, because we need to cook the chicken before we put it in the soup. You can't just put cold or uncooked chicken in the soup. You don't want to boil it. You want to fry it ahead of time, chop it up, and toss it in the soup. We've got a huge thing of celery. And a small thing of celery, which we were eating and now it fell on the floor. And this floor is disgusting, so I will not eat off of this floor. Um, what else do we need here? We need some carrots. And we need some noodles. One sec. We also need, now this is soy milk, I picked up the wrong thing. We need some chicken broth, not soy milk. Do not confuse the two for one another. If you make your soup with soy milk, I promise you it will not come out well. It will be terrible. You're welcome to try, of course, if you so desire, but I really, really, really don't recommend it. So, first things first, the chicken. Chicken's gonna take the longest, so we wanna start on that right away. So let's. Grab the chicken. Oh god. And in typical typical koibu fashion, we use frozen chicken. Right? So, so what we're gonna do, we are opening the frying pan, turning on the heat. Once we have heat, we add some sort of oil, uh, vegetable oil, uh, olive oil, whatever type of oil you prefer to cook with. Oh, yeah, it's like three tablespoons, two tablespoons, two tablespoons, something like that. And then we take our completely and utterly frozen chicken, that has not been thawed in any way, shape, or form, and we toss on a few pieces. We toss on as much chicken as our frying pan will hold. into a slight problem that our chicken is very thick. Normally I like to get chicken breasts or something, or um, chicken tender or something that isn't quite, you know, like this thick, because that takes a long time to thaw, uh, cook all the way through the middle. Yeah. Well, this guy's not that bad. You can see he's actually two pieces of chicken that have been stuck together. Hopefully they'll come apart, but this bottom guy is really, really thick, which is unfortunate for us. And yes, that is what she said. Alright, we got a little bit of chicken left. Put that back in the freezer for now. Now we're going to throw a lid on this sucker. And in addition to the lid, let's just wash off frozen chicken. Uh, we're going to take any thing, give it a little bit of water so it's not that much, just enough. And we toss it in here with the frozen chicken. Put the lid on. You know what? That was not enough water. Let's get it a little bit more. It's about twice what I had before. Total. All right. Put them both in there. Make sure the lid is nice and secure. And that will help the chicken cook a little bit faster. Okay. We have the meat. Uh, the not the meat. The the chicken is on medium high heat. Um, and there's actually not too much to do now. The chicken is like the hardest, is the most time intensive part. Now, what we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna we're gonna deal with this these things over here. Now we have a knife, this really really nice knife that one of the viewers sent in a while ago. He was so tired of seeing us doing cooking with quite a bit with shitty knives where we're like sawing through things. This. It's a wonderful knife. I, we haven't done cooking with Quibu since I got it, but I've used it by myself. And it's really nice. It's actually sharp, and it stays sharp and cuts through things really well. So we're going to use this sucker. Not that we need it for celery. We're going to grab three, four. Four sticks of celery. Counter so disgusting. I should move it for 
Uh, we're going to chop off these little end bits, I think. I don't actually know, but we're going to anyway. And wherever it goes from green to white, see how we have green over here and white over here? We want to cut somewhere in the middle, something like that. We want to get rid of that white stuff. And we don't want to drop our celery, because as I said before, this floor is disgustingly filthy. Oh, God. oh, we're just dropping everything. Oh, my God. Cook with Kleibu, more like dropping food with Kleibu. Oh, man, I'm better than that. All right, so remember to speak up for the volume. Getting rid of the ends right there. Here we go. Four pieces of celery. Ends removed. Now we take our celery and we're going to cut it up. Okay. You know what? I do not think I did a very good job of this. Let's come take a look at the celery here. Um, I think the chunks that we want or the chunks we want to be a little bit smaller, right? I'm talking about this thick. I really think they should be half that size. So we're going to come back and recut the celery again. I guess you can't recut again, but we're going to cut the celery again. You could recut the celery again, but we haven't recut it to begin with. So I guess I'm going to kind of just botch this job and cut everything, and not necessarily in any given pattern, just going to kind of cut it up. Smaller bits of celery now. Whatever, who cares, right? Who cares? So that's celery. And now it's the time for the carrots. Now, when we cut the carrots and celery, we want to make sure that we keep them divided. You're going to put them in at different times, and you don't want them to uh, interrupt each other. Um, you don't want them to mix in with each other because otherwise the, the carrots take a lot longer to cook and your carrots will be undercooked and your celery will be overcooked if you cook them, cook them together at the same time. God, this knife is so good. All right. Carrots. We're cropping on the same board, but we've, we've kind of created a separate carrot space for them. Actually, you know, let's check on our chicken real quick. Like. Oh yeah, chicken needs to be flipped. All right. Those two pieces that were stuck together are still stuck together, but they're coming apart. They're coming apart. Let's see if we can't pry those pieces apart with a spatula and a wooden spoon. Come on. Come, oh, wait, there we go, almost. Almost. Oh, come on. Nope, not coming apart. Well, that's a shame. Leave our lid back on. Don't want too much of that water to evaporate. The water really helps it. Because then it steams the entire inside and brings the whole temperature up, you know. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, chopping carrots. I like to position my carrots in a counter pattern. I don't know what you would call this, but where one is up and one is down and one is up. It makes it easier for me to cut. carrots as thin as possible. Well, I mean, not as thin as possible, but you want to cut them nice and thin. You don't want thick carrots, because thick carrots take longer to cook. Now, I should prefer, I should have prefaced all this by saying I've only made chicken soup once before, and it came out pretty good, but I think I've ruined the noodles. Okay. 
running out of room on this cutting board. So let's just move some stuff aside. Ends of the sucker. Ends of that sucker. Cut. Awesome. Don't cut your fingers, guys. Okay. Now let's get the stuff that we cut off, get rid of that. So we don't actually have anything to. I just went to the store right before the show, which is why it was actually so late, and grabbed the celery, and I actually have nothing to put the celery in, no bag. Ooh, we have. Where's the bag of carrots? Oh shit, that's already thrown away. Um, well, in a pinch, saran wrap. Oh god. Oh, that saran wrap break is terrible. And you know what? It's not even enough saran wrap to cover the cellar, so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm clearly just a crazy person babbling. There we go. Now this is enough. Let's see if we can actually tear it off. Yes! That's genius. Oh god, this is not gonna work. Oh my god, what have we done? What have we done? All right. Huzzah. You know what? I probably could just put this in here. But it doesn't actually need a bag. That's probably why it's sold without a bag, is because it doesn't actually need a bag. Whatever, Neil. We're slightly crazy. That's fine. So, chicken is still going. We're going to want to put... What is this here? This is a 32 ounce container of chicken broth. Uh, I guess technically you can make your own broth, but I have no idea how to do that for later editions. So we're going to dump that chicken broth into here. Okay, poke a hole in the top so it will drain through. Remember, these containers, these um, cardboard with wax on them, are not recyclable. Nope, I cannot recycle them. So we got some chicken broth. We're gonna need to add some water to this. I don't know how much. Let's check on the chicken first. Let's think about the, the water. So let's come back over here. Oh yeah, those two pieces come apart real easy now. Okay, good. Now. Now we need a smaller knife to prod the chicken with to see how cooked the chicken is all the way through. So let's start with this guy. Oh, you're not even, you're still frozen in the center. You're still frozen in the center. You're coming along nicely. You're frozen most of the way through. You're coming along nicely. Now this is a problem, because two of our pieces of chicken are really thin and they cook all the way through very quickly. The other are quite thick and they're not cooking as well. So we're going to this is the only wooden, wooden cutting board we have in the house, which drives me crazy. Because I very much like wooden cutting boards. But we can do this big red plastic one instead. Hmm. Well, before we take the chicken out, we're going to pepper it. We're going to salt it, and we're going to throw some basil on it, because I love me some basil. Mmm, I love basil. Basil is the most delicious thing, well, not the most delicious thing, but the most delicious spice that has ever been invented. I'll let that sit for a little while, and I'm going to go check on chat. Be right back.
Okay, it seems that chat agrees that the volume is fine, so we're good there. They're upset at my cooking techniques, but this is what you get when you watch Cooking with Koivu. If you don't know this already, I am not a cook. Um, I mean, clearly I'm cooking things, but I'm not a, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making this up as I go along. Okay. From this, let's flip the chicken, at least let's flip the, the two thin pieces that we've already spiced that we're going to take out shortly. Now, I think we put a little bit too much water in here to begin with, which, you know what, if that happens, it's fine. Those two pieces that we flipped over, we're going to pepper the other side, salt the other side, and basil the other side. Now we're going to put this into a soup, so I don't actually know if we need to be doing all the seasoning on the chicken. It seems like it won't make that big of a difference. But you know what? We're already here and we're already doing it, so there we go. Put the lid back on, give it a few more moments. Okay, so when we're done with the chicken, we're going to take it out and we're going to chop it up into little tiny bits. And then we're going to cook the uh, carrots in what you know is left in the frying pan of the chicken. Then we're going to cook after the carrots have been cooking for a little while. Then we're going to toss in the celery. And then we're going to take all of these things and put them in this pot together. With some water. How much water should we put in? More. You know what? Fuck it. We're just going to do it. I'm going to attempt to put, if the the chicken broth is one part, I'm going to try and put another part of chicken broth in. So one part chicken broth to one part water. It's another 32 ounces of water. Of course, I'm eyeballing this, so we'll see. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Chicken's had a moment. Let's take off this lid again. Poke around our little chicken guys, and let's take the the two thin ones that are done. Just move them on out. Everything else stays and continues to cook. I said continues to cook. There we go. Now, take our big sharp knife. Let's kind of switch these boards around. Big sharp knife, and we're just going to chop the chicken. Woo, it's hot. We want to chop it into bite sized pieces. So that way it's, you know, because you're having it in chicken soup, you don't want huge hunks of chicken that you have to pry apart with a knife and fork. You want bite sized pieces. So we chop the chicken to be about yay big. Each one of those pieces could easily fit in our mouth. Yeah? I hope you can see that well. Okay. And now we push all that chicken all the way to the edge. Uh, over the edge and we wait. Mmm, tastes delicious. Oh, because I haven't had breakfast though. So, let's flip the remaining chicken again. It's really thick, which is problematic in my book. We're going to very carefully cut these big ass thick chicken pieces in half. We don't want to scratch the surface of the Teflon frying pan. Oh god, I can't even cut these in half. Well, we're going to make big incisions in them to cook the insides faster. Let's see if I can actually show you this. Alright, we're going to drip a little bit of juice here. But you see how we just make this deep incision that kind of goes all the way through. I can't saw through it yet because it's still too frozen, but a deep incision like this will help get those insides cooked. Yes, it just splashed chicken water juice all over me. Let's put a top on this and go change our shirt because we are covered in disgusting chicken juice. Be right back.
Okay, we are back. Same shirt, different color. Inside out, but same shirt, different color. Now it's on backwards. Come on, Neil, we can put on a shirt. How many times does it take to put on a shirt? Okay, here we go. Inside, correct side, correct facing, perfect. All right, we're back over here with our chicken. Good, we're using our, our big spatula to try and cut through the chicken even further. It's working. We're going to flip it so the incision side is face down. Down, down. There we go. Oh, we should have seasoned it before we flipped it. You know what? Whatever. I don't think the seasoning is even going to matter once it goes in the soup. Okay. This whole area is kind of just wet with chicken juice and shit, which is unfortunate. It means I'm mopping the floor later today. We have our carrots sliced nicely. This is our carrot and celery board, which hopefully you can see. Mmm, I do love carrots. Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right, now. I don't know if you can hear this, but listen. Yeah, our chicken it has run out of water. It's finally boiled it all off. So, what do we do now? Well, We've split our chicken. Oh, somehow the heat got turned way down. I guess that was me. I didn't mean to turn it that far down, though. Uh, but unfortunately, most of our chicken is still quite raw in the middle. But we don't want the outsides to cook too much more. This is slightly problematic. We're going to take a little bit more water, add it to this. And if you guys will note right now, I don't know if you can see this. Um, so we've got these big chunks of chicken that have been divided in half. There's one that I can actually pick up. Ooh, um, you notice that the center part is still raw. You can't see it. Shit. The point is, the parts that we've cut in half, you want to turn down so that raw face is facing the bottom of the pan. So it gets cooked better. Just what used to be the inside that is now the outside should be the bottom. That's the best way to explain it. Okay, then we're gonna throw that lid back on. Ooh, hot, 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 hot lid, hot lid. Reposition on the stove properly. Let it do its thing. Awesome. God, this floor is disgusting. So, um, what's next? Now we, we really just kind of have to wait. Uh, later today we'll be doing the quiet year, which is gonna be awesome. Tomorrow. We have Dicing with Death. Oh shit, Necco Lucifer, if you're still around, I gave you the wrong time. I said it was going to, I said 14 hours from when we said it was supposed to be 28 or 38 hours. It's not 6 o'clock today, it's 6 o'clock tomorrow. My bad, Necco. I, I got fucked up in the head. It was late at night. Forgive me. Now our chicken cooks. I'm going to wait. And wait. And wait. God, I'm really hungry. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have anything in the meantime. Ooh. Some ice cream. Yes, we are barbarians here. We do not possess an ice cream scooper. Forgive us. Now, if we weren't actually in the middle of doing a show, and you guys weren't watching this bowl, it would be like five times this bowl. It would literally be a mound of ice cream. But we're trying to be polite because we're actually streaming. So, small amount of ice cream, small bites. This is the greatest thing about being an adult, is that you can have ice cream for breakfast if you so desire. Oh! There's root beer in that fridge. I could be having a root beer float right now. Next time we do cooking with Koi, we should just be making root beer floats and testing them, you know? Do this one with this type of ice cream. This one with that type of ice cream, this one with this other type of ice cream. And then we'll use this root beer, then that root beer, and then we'll use Coke for this other one. And then we'll do like, what, it's three and three, that's nine pairs, nine possibilities. Nine different types of root beer floats, and we'll just try them all. Damn, that sounds like a great show. I'll need to get some friends over to taste test. We should do that show. That show would be bad. Alright, not quite done with the ice cream yet, but let's check on the chicken. Use a spatula to hold it down, and then I need to pry inside and poke at it to see if it's still raw. Alright, you little bastard. Come here. Come here! Nope, still raw in the middle. How are you doing over here? Oh, you're nice. You cooked all the way through. You cooked all the way through. You're a little raw in the middle. You're basically done, though. How about you, big boy? You have just a tiny raw spot. You have a small raw spot. So it's really just this one motherfucking piece. Okay. We'll cut the chicken in half again. Put the lid back on. ice cream and continue eating it. Mm. It's quite good, you know. There's something about vanilla ice cream that is so wonderful, you know? I think I like vanilla ice cream more than I like chocolate ice cream. Okay. Just waiting for our chicken. Hmm. Yep, just waiting. Let's talk about noodles while we wait. These. Well, clearly this is not the container that they came in. But this is the container that we're holding them in this household. These are what is known as egg noodles. I presume it's because they're made with egg, uh, but I don't really know. And yeah, that's what we use for this. We use egg noodles. I don't know why, we just do. It's what the recipe called for, so here we are. If this were beef, I wouldn't hesitate on pulling it out really. You know, you can have beef that's a little undercooked. In fact, I, you know, when you order a burger, I always order my burger medium rare. Some people order more rare. I, people order a steak just like raw, a cow. But 
Well, with chicken, you really want to make sure it's cooked. Salmonella and all that jazz or whatever. I don't know. I'm just doing what my mom told me. Waiting on the chicken. It's taking a while because those pieces are really big. You know, you want your chicken to be even when you put it in the frying pan. If we had thawed the chicken ahead of time, we could like cut them so that they were all even thicknesses, but I mean, who are you talking to? We don't thaw our chicken around here. Come on, we wait till the last moment then we pull the frozen chicken out and toss it on the frying pan. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. The reason I, I hesitate so long is because I want to keep that lid on to keep that interior, that temperature up. And every time you take off the lid, then you lose all, you lose some of the heat, and you lose a bunch of water, yada yada yada. So we try to leave the lid on as long as possible and take it off for a short period of time as possible. All right, chicken, are you good? Are you good? I think you're good. All right, the chicken is done. Whew. All right, take the chicken over to our cutting board. Try and drain off whatever juices you can. Get those big hunks. Just chill in there. Come on. No, come here, you little chicken slice. juice and all that stuff still in the frying pan because we're going to cook this other stuff in it. We're going to cut the chicken first. You don't have to cut the chicken first. We could actually be cooking the other stuff now while we cut the chicken, but we're going to just do it one step at a time. Again, into small bite-sized pieces. Bite size is very important here. Okay, now the chicken's cut. We're going to take our carrots first. I'm just going to put them in this mess. Careful not to get any celery here. I mean, if you get like a small bit of celery or a couple small bits of celery, it's fine. But you want to keep most of your celery separate. Turn the right burner on. And recover. Well, first you want to make sure that your, your what are these things called? Carrot pieces are not stacked on top of each other. You want each one of them touching the, the base of the frying pan, if possible. I'm going to throw a lid on this sucker, and we're just going to let it be. Again, on medium-high heat, there's still some juices in there, so that's going to start to boil a little bit in a moment. Oh, yeah. You can see it's starting to boil a little bit already. Excellent. Let's take a look at this chicken and how finely chopped it is. All right, now you can tell that the chicken here is a little bit overcooked. You see how it just looks... It looks different than this chicken. There, it's the ridges are a little bit more ratty and kind of torn apart. It looks a little bit more like it's been ripped to shreds, which is unfortunate. Which means the chicken's a little overcooked. It's okay. It's going in the soup. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, this chicken over here is much nice, more, much better cooked than this. This is parts of this is o are overcooked, parts of it are undercooked. Well, not undercooked, but like see this. This is nice, just right cooked. But this over here. This jerk. Totally overcooked. Of course, I could be making this up on the spot. Well, I am making this up on the spot. I don't actually know if there's a visible difference in chicken cookness. I'm pulling, basically everything I'm talking about is coming out of my ass. I have no formal training whatsoever. And these are all just assumptions and judgments I'm making based on personal experience, which could be completely wrong. So, awesome. 
All right, our carrots, they are cooking. And here's, here's the truth, because I cooked carrots like twice. I have no personal sense of feel for when they should be done. So we're just going to let them go. I don't know when carrots are done. I don't know how long they take to cook. Now it's less time, more time than celery by a lot. So we just wait. Wow, there's a lot of waiting when it comes to cooking. So this is my house. This is my kitchen. Ooh, that looks nice. I'm poking them with the spatula, and they feel pretty damn hard still. So we can give them some more time. Um, I don't know what to tell you. We've got spices. We've got a microwave. We've got a coffee maker stuff. I don't know. I don't like to drink coffee. That's coffee shit. Cabinets, refrigerator and freezer, trash can, sink, windows. Yeah, a door. Door. This door leads into the hallway that goes between my study, or my office, my streaming room, and the outside. So whenever you see me climbing out the window that is, you know, to my left, it's I'm climbing into the hallway that this door leads into. Yes, my window leads into a hallway. It's weird, right? San Francisco housing, man. All right, let's poke the carrots again. I don't feel like they've made any progress. I'm gonna just kind of stir them around and flip some of them over. All right, I'm getting impatient. I don't know if they're done or not. We're just gonna put toss in the celery. No, let's wait. Let's wait. No, fuck it, let's just do it. Alright. <clears throat> Whatever, YOLO. Alright, now we're going to take all this nice chicken that we chopped and we're going to toss it in this water. Some noodles too. You know, we should actually start boiling this. We should start boiling this ages ago. Where's our lid? Made the carrots and celery for a little bit. Get this heat on high. Yep, now we just wait. Oh, no, we're waiting on the noodles. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna basically get the water to boiling. Um, we'll throw all the ingredients in hopefully before it gets to boiling. Then once it gets to boiling, we're just going to kill it um, and let it sit. You can have the soup right away if you want, but soup is always better than the day after you make it. You'll make the soup, you'll have some like, oh, this is okay, yes, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Oh, well. But you're going to put the soup away because, you know, you're not going to eat all the soup in one sitting. And then you're bring out the soup the next day and you're like, God, I guess i got to eat the soup. It's not as good as I hoped. And you're going to try and be like, oh, my God, the soup is way better than it was yesterday. I don't know why. But soup is always better the next day. It's it's a miracle. It's a, amazing. It's no one knows what it is. Well, at least I don't know what it is. Okay, our veggies are cooked. Open this lid, and we're literally just going to scrape them right off the frying pan. 
into here. Now, if you look at the frying pan now, it's got all these like juices and all this stuff that's like stuck to it all over the place. Add a little bit of water. Grab ourselves a silicone spatula. One of these fuckers. And just kind of stir it all together. Because we want to get all these wonderful juices and shit that are sitting on this frying pan, which tastes amazing and delicious. And we want to scoop them all up and put them in our pot. Silicone specials work really well for this. So you can scrape them and get all the stuff up without hurting the frying pan. Mmm, give this guy a little stir. That guy. You know, I honestly think this is not enough water. I think we need more water. Let's just fill this guy up with water. It's a large vessel that's already dirty. There we go. That's better. So, <clears throat> the back on. Now the question is, how many egg noodles do you put in? Last time I put in too many. So we're going to do half of this, and this is a 15, if this were full, it would be 16 cups, it's not full, I'm going to say this is 12 cups or something, I don't, I don't fucking know, I'm going to put half of this in. There we go, that's half. It's really easy to overdo the noodles. And when you do, you realize why people put noodles in sparingly. When it becomes mostly noodles, it's not as good. You really want to get the noodle, chicken, vegetable ratio just right. So here's our wooden thing that we were using earlier. Stir all of our shit together. Basically, at this point, we just wait for it to boil, and when it boils, we turn it off. So that's it. That's our show. That's our cooking with Quig. I don't know where to stand to be in the optimal position for this camera, but that's the show.